Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ENT consultant working for the NHS in Central London. I often talk about blocked nose in this uh, on my channel because a lot of my patients are on CPAP, that mask that you wear if you've got obstructive sleep apnea, and that causes a blocked nose. But there are other reasons why people might have a blocked nose, such as something known as house dust mite. House dust mite is a, is a little creature that lives in most of the houses in this country, in the UK, and it tends to cause an allergic response in your nose that blocks up your nose. So in this video, I'm going to tell you all about these little creatures. Specifically, I'll concentrate on how to get rid of them. And if you watch to the end of this video, I do have a free ebook that I'll make available to anyone who wants to know about this. So anyway, back to this video. House dust mites are about a quarter of a millimetre in size and they are not bed bugs. A lot of people think they're bed bugs. These bed bugs are disgusting little creatures that bite you and go underneath your skin and grow there. That's not what this is all about. This is about house dust mites that don't do that. They are disgusting and however in lots of different fascinating exciting ways but don't bite us they actually feed off our skin the stuff that flakes off us every day so we lose about a gram and a half of skin every day and that gram and a half can feed about a million house dust mite and a lot of these house dust mite live in fabric like uh, like our mattress, um, our carpets, curtains, uh, upholstery on, on furniture, things like that. So for example, in mattresses, there are about up to about 10 million house dust mites in a, a mattress. And because each of these house dust might make about 100 babies, and each house dust mite makes about 200 little poo samples in their lifetime, which is about, uh, about 10 weeks long, their lifespan. You can imagine there's an awful lot of stuff going on in your bed. Uh, there, I had a really disgusting fact once that if you have a bed for about, I think it was two to five years, it's typically twice the weight it was when you first purchased it because of all the skin and little creatures crawling around in it and I guess the, the animal poo in there. But I guess that mattress must be quite nice for house dust mite because they're sort of lying in your bed and letting flakes of food come down on top of them and then they just sort of have babies in amongst their poo. So it must be a wonderful life for them. It's a bit like sort of being outside and donuts flying from the sky or something. I don't know how you can live like that. But anyway, that's how it seems to be for house dust mite. Now, the reason I'm telling you about house dust mite is that this house dust mite, particularly their poo and different components, parts of their body, because there's so much of it in our houses these days that it ends up getting into the air. And we, when if it's in the air, we breathe it in through our nose and our mouth. And so a lot of people uh, have house dust mite allergy and it gives them asthma or a blocked nose because it causes inflammation inside your nose. Now, often when we doctors see this on a RAST blood test or a skin prick test, ah, oh, you're allergic to house dust mite. Please take this spray and hopefully that will be the end of it. Now, that works very well because what it does is that that steroid spray suppresses your immune system, stops it from reacting so much to the allergens that you're breathing in every day. But some people rather sensibly think, well, maybe I should just get rid of the house dust mite and I won't have this problem so much. So the first thing people do when they learn about house dust mites think, ah, house dust mite, right, dust, right. All I need to do is get a vacuum cleaner and vacuum clean and get rid of all the dust from this house and it'll be great. I'll spend the whole day and everything will be cured. Unfortunately, it doesn't work very well. Um, Cleaning up uh, with a vacuum cleaner does work to an extent. It gets rid of a lot of the poo, but doesn't seem to get rid of the house dust mite. And also you need to have a, um, a vacuum cleaner which has got a HEPA filter on it because what you're doing is with the hoover is blasting the, the poo into the air and that's not great because it'll all settle again and then the whole thing will start all over again. So you do need to get a vacuum cleaner that will flush out or filter out all this stuff from the air. So if you're interested in what I bought for my family to try and reduce the amount of house dust mite in our house, uh, there's some links in the video description below about some Amazon links, that things like this vacuum cleaner I was telling you about with the HEPA filter. And there are other things you can think about as well. For example, the temperature is really important because house dust might like to live between about 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. That's how they, they, they grow the most. I think 23 is meant to be the optimal sort of temperature. That happens to be the same sort of temperature we have in our bedrooms as well, although I think officially you should try and be a little bit low if you want to get better sleep, but that's another video which I'll, I think I'll pop up there for you. There is an important fact that, that house dust mites tend to die when the temperature rises about 55 to 60 degrees. So if you have uh, bed sheets, um, duvets, pillows, all those sorts of things, you should try and wash them at about 60 degrees or higher. Um, 60 degrees Celsius is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't really understand what Fahrenheit is, but apparently a lot of Americans use Fahrenheit. It's something to do with the stabilised pressure of ammonia and ice and water or something. I don't understand it. I use Celsius because that's zero is freezing, 100 is boiling. 
But anyway, whatever you like to use, it's about 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. So that works really well. And also you can use the tumble dry, which tends to be a little bit hotter as well. And that gets rid of a lot of things in your bed sheets and things like that. But you still got um, like soft toys that you can't wash at sort of 60 to 70 degrees. So what some people do is get their soft toys from their children, put them in a sealed bag, put them in the freezer overnight and then wash them at the normal temperature. That seems to reduce a house dust mite a little bit as well. But on saying that, it's really hard to put your, your mattress into the, into the washing machine. It just, you can't do that. Or your carpets, that just, it's just not going to work. So what I would use for the carpets is a sort of a steam vacuum cleaner that will sort of steam the carpets and try and kill off as many of the house dust mites as you can in, that, in, the, in the carpet. But also, instead of just the temperature, you should also think about the humidity in your bedrooms and in your house. Because house dust might really need a lot of fluid or water in the air to help them grow. They particularly like um, humidity of about sort of 70 or 60 to 70 um, percent uh, humidity in the air. And you can buy these little um, monitors that tells you how much humidity is in the air. I think what I'm trying to do is reduce the humidity down to about 30, 40 percent, because that will severely impact the growth cycle and the, the life cycle of these house dust might and make it easier for you to clean the area up and stop them from growing so quickly back. Now, if you remember, I started talking about the vacuum cleaner and pumping this stuff out into the air and you changing the bed sheets and doing all that sort of thing will release a lot of house dust mite into the air. What I have done is bought an air purifier with, again, a filter in it. So you can leave that on all the time. It clears out the air all the time so you don't get this uh, air um, filled up with house dust mites and, and house dust mite poo. And that will also reduce the, the amount of steroids you need to give your child. Uh, another thing you can do, because as I said, you can get um, house dust mite in the, uh, in the arms and the upholstery of your furniture, which is you can't wash or do anything. You can get these chemicals that can kill off house dust mite and you can spray that onto uh, your furniture. Looking at the research, th there are variable results of this and sometimes you can get resistance forming with these sprays. Some of these um, chemicals, I would say that you should spray it and then leave the room. Use your air purifier to clean out the air as well. Uh, I'd leave the room for at least 20 minutes because although they say they're safe, it just sort of slightly worries me. And some of these, uh, these chemicals can be harmful to your pets, so do look at them. From a medication point of view, without using steroids, I would use something like a, a hypertonic Sterimar sort of spray or a saline spray. And you just spray this stuff up your nose and that washes out all the allergens so you don't get so affected by them, particularly with a blocked nose. And if you notice that you're getting very itchy and sort of red eyes and watery eyes, then things like um, antihistamines, again, I'll put a link in the video description if I can find one. Uh, these can help uh, reduce the itchiness in your throat and the you know, people sort of uh, with their tongue on the roof of their mouth and they get very itchy eyes and get red eyes. People who are in those, have those sorts of symptoms rather than the blocked nose, then you can use um, antihistamine that helps that. Just be wary that although the new antihistamines say that they're non-drowsy, which is true, they are less drowsy than the others, they still cause drowsiness. So don't um, think that they're non-drowsy, they are still drowsy. But what I really want to uh, make clear is that all of this is, is more of a campaign rather than like a single battle. Uh, you need to do this every week. It's a real hassle. But if you want to try and protect your family, that's what you need to do. Just keep at it. Keep keeping the house clear of house dust mites. You don't have to use so much steroid. And fingers crossed, that's all you need. And you find that actually I don't need so much of suppressing of my own immune system just to live in my own house. And hopefully it'll help you. Now, if your doctor does say, look, really you ought to use a steroid spray, which is a good idea whilst you're sorting out the house, clearing out the house dust mite, you need to make sure that you're using your steroid spray correctly. A lot of people sort of spray and sniff it up, which is one of the worst things you can do with these sprays. So if you want to know more about how to use a steroid spray correctly so you don't get all the side effects and, and get the maximum benefit from these sprays, look at this video here. Uh, a lot of people seem to like it, so hopefully you'll find that useful. But before I forget, I did say at the start of this video that there is a free ebook available. So all you need to do is look at the video description and there's a link there that goes to this ebook. And this ebook has a lot of the details I couldn't put into this video because this video would have been really even more boring than it already is now. And so if you want to learn more about these little spider arachnid uh, creatures, 
that sort of end up filling the air full of poo, then that's the kind of book uh, you can read. <laughs> and hopefully you'll find it of some benefit as well. Uh, if you don't want to be a part of my newsletter, please just unsubscribe again. And, and that's fine. I'm not going to be upset if you do that. Anyway, thank you very much. Do take care. Bye bye.